morning, everybody. Are you happy to be back in the house of the living God? Let's stand to up tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Two, three. tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own In brokenness and pain you are my hope No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My feet doesn't stand the chance Church members not here texting me on Wednesday night. They ought to be ashamed, hadn't they? Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Amen. I'm trying to see my app right now. Uh, I've got a, uh, I've got another original. 
that I want you to see if you like it. If you, if you, so give me a thumbs up at the end or a thumbs down, okay? <laughs> Praise and worship is never like American Idol or a talent contest, but new songs you can boo tonight if you don't like it, okay? And I'll know that I don't have nothing here and that we just need to put it to the side. But guess what? The song is called Jesus is My King. So I don't think we're going to have a, a bad one here, but I'll let y'all decide. Amen. Beautiful Savior, Sovereign Lord. The Holy One we're waiting for His majesty is what makes us sing Jesus is our King Jesus is my King Jesus lives in me He's my rock and greatest friend He'll go with me till the end His Spirit lives in me Lord Jesus is my King He's your king tonight. Come on. Wonderful Redeemer, Son of God, the one in whom we cast all our cares upon. His royalty and the love he brings. That's why Jesus is our King. Oh, Jesus is my King. Jesus lives in me. He's my rock and greatest friend. He'll go with me till the end. He is Jesus is my King. He saves us cause He loves us. He guides us faithfully. He saved me cause He
Jesus lives in me. He's my rock and greatest friend. He'll go with me till the end. His spirit lives in me. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, well, I'll start working on it. All right, thank you. Sister Joy, <laughs> y'all are so polite. Amen. I was just looking. Ah, come on. Now. All right, Sister Joy, pray a sin tonight. Amen. Yes, amen. That was beautiful. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand clap again. I love these songs that God has given Pastor. And that song takes me back to when Jesus saved my life. That song took me back a little bit to where I was a hopeless person and I didn't know how I was going to make it in this life. And then someone introduced me to Jesus and my life has not been the same since. He's given me joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength and I just pray tonight. We love him so much. Father, we just ask you this evening, God. Father, Lord, to have your way in this service tonight, Father, and we thank you for those that are here. Lord, we pray a special blessing over them, Lord, and Father, we just, we are so glad to have a place to come in through the week, Lord, and rest in you, Father, and sit at the table and, and pull up and dine, Father, and listen to what the Word of God is going to speak to our hearts tonight. Father, we thank you for those watching online. We have so many that are faithful watching online. Bless them, Lord. Father, there's many needs this evening. We just ask you to meet those needs and help our brothers and sisters and our friends. And, Lord, we just ask you to be with the youth groups tonight and help them, Lord, to pay attention, Lord, as they learn of you. Father, keep us all safe throughout the rest of this week. And, Lord, we just love you. We praise you. We lift up your name and glorify you, Father. And, and also be with those that are still mourning right now, Lord. There's so many that's going through uh, this mourning process, Father. But you're with them, Lord. You are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the promises, God, that we can stand up on your word. And we will not fear. We will not bow down. But we will go forward, Father, because you're guiding us. And again, Lord, have your way in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. Let's Amen. give God some praise tonight. Amen. Real quick, we want to remind everyone the website is back up and running. So the website is back up and running, okay? Uh, and with that, we're going to let you know that our broadcast is available online with Facebook. Uh, so please share. Then you can watch later on YouTube. There's plenty of ways to give. If you cannot attend, you can give on our website at cfcsandycross.com. You can also give on our Share Faith app. The download instructions for Apple Victimology is available now on Amazon. And copies are on the way to the Connect Corner. But am I right that they are here? You have them here. Man, that was fast. They're here. The new book's here. Yay! Um. All right, I tell you what, with that too, um, this, I want to thank God for Kingdom Publishing, Michael Bacon, and we're going to do something um, on this book right now. I'm going to make an executive decision. It's $14.99 on Amazon, but if you, and, and we want everybody that, that, you know, outside the church that, that never comes here, get it on there. But here in the church, there's a benefit to being the member. What would you say? $9.99. 10 bucks. Ten bucks. Brand new book. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Hallelujah. God's blessing us, and we've got a new publisher now, and I thank God for him. Uh, so he's making it easier for us to publish books, write books, 
and we want to uh, uh, help you on that. The other books are what they are. Um, you know, we had another publisher on those, but uh, yes, uh, so Victimology is only $10. Amen. All right. Uh, we do have a few $5 t-shirts left and a few $10 sweatshirts. I know it's too hot to be thinking about sweatshirts, but 10 bucks is a good deal on sweatshirts. Uh, so uh, you can ha have them for the winter time. They are left at the Connect Corner. I guess a few of them are still there, okay? Our all-new family room is open. Uh, if you ever need to go in there with your child, you can just shut the door behind you. The um, changing table's in there. The playpen's in there. Nursing booth for new mothers. And are we live in there? Is everything okay with the live stream is on in there, okay? So you can go in there. I want to tell everybody... Our only handicap accessible restrooms are across from our cafe as you enter the main lobby, okay? The other bathrooms are not handicap accessible. So uh, make sure you know that. And anybody you know that's visiting that needs a handicap uh, bathroom, realize that they're only uh, there at the front door. If you are ever in need, hear me on this now, if you are ever in need of valet parking, Please pull up to the front door and notify a security usher, and they will assist you before and after service, okay? Uh, the plans for the all-new Jerry L. Brazil Family Life Center are out in the lobby, and the building fund has begun and is set up online on our Share Faith app for ongoing donations, all right? Let's, uh, let's make this dream come true in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And it's going to be a big deal when we build this thing. We're going to have a ribbon cutting. We're going to invite the mayor out. We're going to invite everybody out. And Jerry Brazil is going to cut the ribbon to the building named after him. Amen. So let's make that day happen as soon as possible. So thanks so much to all who attended our recent special needs uh, children training session uh, that was held on Saturday. And CFC's 2024 VBS is August 7th through the 10th. August 7th through the 10th. Uh, we'd love uh, more volunteers to help out, especially if you've uh, been called in that regard. Honoring our 2024 Outstanding Community Leader on Sunday, September 8th at 10 a.m. Looking forward to that. Also, uh, CFC's Family Fun Day hosted by our Men's and Ladies Fellowship on Saturday, September 14th. Do we have a time on that yet? Not yet? We'll announce it soon then. All right, before we dismiss the kids, I want to do something here. I failed to talk about this Sunday, I'll, uh, this past Sunday. I will talk about it this Sunday, but I want to go ahead and let you know. I'm going to be preaching victimology again this Sunday at 3 p.m. in Sharpsburg at Presence Church. Um, and it'll be an overall message. We're going to be promoting the book. We're going to carry copies of the book over there with us. Um, but that is on 301 in Sharpsburg. It's right next to the, uh, I don't know if it's still Sharpsburg IGA. It was a grocery store. Um, but the building beside it uh, used to be, I think they used to have karate in that building. But it's called Presence Church, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E -E -E Church. All right. So we'll leave here, and then we'll be going over there. If you'd like to join me, that's fine. Amen. It's going to be an exciting atmosphere. This is a young church, young pastor uh, by the name of DeMonte Daniels, and uh, he is on fire for God. I think he is assistant pastor at another church in the morning, and then he has his own church at uh, 3 o'clock uh, on Sunday. So I'll be going over there. Amen. I'll be going to Nashville, Tennessee next month. So y'all be praying for me. Amen. All right, that is all. Let's go ahead and dismiss our Fusion students, our King's Kids and Junior King's Kids. Can we thank our volunteers tonight for sacrificing their time with your children? If you have a prayer request, please put it on a piece of paper, drop it in the box. They will, um, they will bring it to me at the end. And online, if you're on our uh, live feed tonight, just put your prayer request in the comment section, and they will uh, notate that and announce it, and we've got a few things to pray about on here tonight, amen, but thank you so much for joining us tonight, mm. hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, um, we've been having different people in the church preach each Wednesday night, it has helped me immensely, Amen. 
And uh, I'll be back as soon as the summertime is over with. But I just want to thank you guys for coming out each week and supporting these ministers. You know, um, when Pastor Jerry used to ask me to preach, it was always important to me uh, when I was just getting started in the ministry to be able to look out there and see my church family there uh, assisting me. Amen? Uh, or supporting me, I should say. But I'm so thankful tonight for this great, anointed, humble woman of God. Um, she is just growing in leaps and bounds. We've licensed her and will eventually ordain her uh, when the Lord says so. But she, uh, she's just a, a woman of integrity, a woman of standard, uh, a woman of character, and a woman of anointing. And I'm just so thankful that we have her here at our church. Uh, she's kind. Um, she's uh, very discerning, and I just thank God for her and her children and all that God is doing through her and for her. So let's get up on our feet, and let's welcome our own tonight, Minister Melinda Gonzalez. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> All right. God bless you, family. Let's give another round of applause, not for me, <laughs> but because the king is in the room. <laughs> Glory to God. You are in the presence of royalty. And I know you didn't come here just to hear me stand up here and speak. I know that you came here for a move from God. I believe that you came here with an expectation on tonight that you wanted to feel a presence of the Holy Spirit. I believe that you came in here tonight because something in you needs to be stirred and you want to be stirred up to good works. I believe you came in here tonight to connect with your believers and to connect with your Savior and to know that change is going on and change is still taking place as he changes us from glory to glory. Amen, church. Things happen in our lives. We know that things happen in our lives. And it can be easy to start to fall into doubt and discouragement. But we go from victory to victory to victory in the name of Jesus. And so we thank him on tonight. And let's join together here and just thank him one more time. Lord God, we thank you for your presence in this house. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to gather together as family, as children of the Most High God. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made by pouring out your blood on Calvary's cross so that we could come together as one in you. Lord God, we thank you for seeing every heart in here tonight and the need on every heart. And we thank you that you are here to supply. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have to speak to us today. And we thank you that there is something in this word for each of us to go out and walk in our everyday lives. And for all that you do in advance, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. I'm here to talk to you tonight on the subject, God's dream team. This is what the Lord has given to me. We are God's dream team. We are team Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, a dream team is a team of people who've been handpicked, specially selected, chosen, perceived as being the best combination of individuals for a particular purpose or task. And so we know, according to 1 Peter 2.9, but you are a chosen generation, generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness 
into his marvelous light. I love that word, marvelous. Isn't he marvelous? <laughs> so, beloved, all of those of us who are in Christ, we are God's dream team. He was able to look down through time, and he knew you and I, even before we were formed in our mother's womb, he knew that one day he would come, born of a virgin, live a sinless life, and then willingly give his life, lay it down, accepting death on the cross to pay the penalty for sin that you and I owed the debt for but could never pay. He knew that he would draw us to himself and that we would respond to him with a yes for those of us who have received the work that was done on the cross to the salvation of our souls that we would believe on him as the one and only one in whom there is salvation from sin and that sin that had separated all of humanity from God. He knew that we would receive by faith and that we would confess him as Lord, confess that God had raised Jesus from the dead according to Romans 10 and 10, and that he would open our spiritual eyes to see and our spiritual ears to hear the love that God has for us and that his kindness would lead us to repentance. And so from the beginning of time, God knew that he was preparing a people and that we would be his hands and feet on the earth. We are God's dream team. Now, an example that I'll give you of a dream team, those of you uh, who like to watch the Olympics or like sports, you may be familiar with that term. Uh, but particularly, there was one special dream team that I found out when I did my research. It took me back <laughs> to 92, okay, 1992 Olympics. And what I found out was that prior to the 92 Olympics, the basketball teams were barred, the professional teams, specifically the National Basketball Association or the NBA, from competing against other countries in the, the uh, Olympics. And so prior to 92, the teams were mainly made up of AAU players, which were sometimes high schoolers, or colleges and universities. And so as other countries began to get semi-pro players and players were increasing in their ability to play the game, suddenly we were finding ourselves at a loss. And so NBA was on a rise. They were making basketball, the sport, uh, well-known and famous worldwide on a professional level, but yet they were barred from using those skills to compete on behalf of the United States. And so, of course, they petitioned that the committee would change this rule, and in 92, for the first time, they allowed NBA players to represent the United States of America. And so, that term was suddenly more well-known and coined for that team. They were called the Dream Team, because those who formed the team were able to pick the players that they considered to be the most skilled uh, to come together and to create that team. And of course, uh, all predictions went out that they would, it would be a blowout and that they would win. And it was so. The rest is history. It seems like they dominated, apparently, uh, at least scoring an average of 40 points more than the opposition. How much more exciting is it for us to be on God's dream team? Amen. Okay, I, that was a nice clap. That was a nice clap. But think about it. We're talking about a team whose champion is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. A champion that has never lost, 
never been defeated and never will be defeated. A champion who always has the victory. And not only does he hold the victory, but he grants us the victory in himself. Amen. Everybody say, I got the victory. That's right. Amen. And so we look around us and we see the current crisis and some that we've all seen on our TVs and on our phones this week. And it saddens us to see such chaos. It saddens us to see lawlessness. It saddens us to see when evil seems to go unpunished. We see deceit in the world. But you know, all of this was no mystery to God. It's been going on since sin entered the world. And yet with his foreknowledge and infinite wisdom, he knew that there would come a day when he would need a prepared people, a willing people who would stand against the enemy in spite of every kind of difficulty and hardship that they may face. A committed people who would say, for Christ, I live. And if need be, for Christ, I die. Now, we know that this is not just for us here in this house or even in this town or state. We know that there are believers across the world right now who are standing together. And even though we can't always see them, brothers and sisters, we are one with them. This is in a... a worldwide body of Christ. May we remember to pray for them. May we remember that we are standing together with them. There are those who are imprisoned for their faith. There are those who are left to run and put out of their homes and out of their cities for their faith. There are those who are separated from their families. There are those who even in this moment that we speak, though we may not see them or know where they are, who are giving up their very life for what we're here doing tonight. We're a blessed people and we are a privileged people. So we have seen the testimony of such believers even since the day of John the Baptist, the days of John the Baptist in the word of God and in the scriptures, spreading the good news of the kingdom of God. And then, of course, we've seen the disciples and we read about in the scriptures, the apostles. After Christ's death on the cross, his burial and resurrection from the dead, we see the early church throughout the book of Acts and so on. And so what we want to do is reaffirm. It's a good thing for us to reflect. It's a good thing for us to ask ourselves, am I still committed to the Lord? Is my heart still with the Lord no matter the cost? Am I still willing to go where he sends me, to say what he says to say, to do what he says to do, to speak to whomever he sends me to? Am I still committed to the Lord Jesus Christ? Do we love him with our whole heart and our whole soul Hallelujah. to the degree where I, don't, I deny myself my rights? I may want to get angry. I may want to get even at someone who treats me wrong, but I deny myself my rights. I have no right. If he shed his blood so that I would be forgiven, in spite of all that I had done against him, how can I not forgive my brother and my sister? To God be the glory. Do we still believe that he is the only answer for the world today? Do we still understand that no matter who ends up in the White House, no matter who ends up in Congress, that Jesus Christ is still the only answer for the world today. And just like he was calling the 12 back in the gospels, as we read in the scriptures, he's still calling us today. Come follow me. Come, come follow me. I want to make you fishers of men. Come, come follow me. He is still beckoning us today, church, to follow him. And he is still in the drawing business. As a matter of fact, there may be those who are under sound of my voice, even if you're not in this house. If you happen to watch this broadcast some other time, or if you're watching online, 
If you sense that the Lord is drawing you, and you'll know it because you'll feel it in your heart, call out to him. God's dream team is made up of people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every language across the whole world. And there's always room for more. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2, Paul is writing this letter. He's addressing this letter to the believers at Corinth. So he says, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. So you see what the scriptures do? They always make account for us. We can't say that this was just to the believers at Corinth because by the Holy Spirit, Paul writes, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. And let's not stop calling on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. Amen. He is an ever-present help in time of trouble. Ephesians 2.10 also says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. So, yes, God's dream team has a purpose. He is still in the saving business. He is still seeking. He is still seeking, seeking out those who are lost because he wants to minister salvation. He says to us in his word, and we call this, of course, the great commission of Matthew 28, starting in verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. What a God we serve. <laughs> and what a team we are on. Amen. I thank the Lord that through him we are able to do mighty things, not in our own strength, we know that, and not in our own power, not in our flesh, but by his Holy Spirit. Can he use us? Are our lives yielded to him? Will we remain yielded to him? In spite of distractions, in spite of the cares of this world, in spite of what we want for our lives, in spite of my dream for me, it's his dream for me that I want. Amen? That's the only one that will satisfy us. We can think we know what we want. We can think we know what we need. But he is the one. He is the one that will guide our lives into all truth and all righteousness. Amen. He blesses us with a fulfilling life. This Christian journey is a happy one. This Christian journey is a joyful one. Even on the days that you may feel some sorrow or some sadness, the Christian life is an exciting journey. He sends us to places we would never think to go on our own. And as we yield to him, yield ourselves to him completely, he will lead us and guide us and do things in and through our lives that we never imagined for his glory. Amen. Uh, I love the way he leads us, and I love the way he guide, uh, guides us. And this message, pastor, as we always say, the, the one who is sharing the message goes through it, you know, has to go through that message themselves. And so I love preparing the message and how the Lord challenges me in that message. And there's sometimes when I say to him, Lord, I've been busy lately. I've just been running in and out. You know how it is as parents taking care of your families, uh, doing the day-to-day, -day, going back and forth to work, thinking about the things that are coming ahead that you need to take care of, the bills and so on and so on, right? And so sometimes I have to sit down and stop and take an account and say, Lord, I haven't gone and spoken to somebody lately. I, I miss that. I miss you telling me and directing me 
to go over there and speak to somebody and seeing what you do and being able to share the good news of the gospel with them. And so that's on me, church. So then when I'm in the car and the Holy Spirit prompts me and I start to talk to him and I start to pray, I'll stop in the middle of what I'm doing sometime. And that happened to me today. That happened with Zeke and I, too, um, leaving here out of church, not this past Sunday, but Sunday before. And so sometimes I have to stop the busyness and speak to him and say, okay, Lord, what are you saying to me? Before I just dart in this store and go into that store, what are you saying to me? And so today, he had already let me observe a young man who was walking along the parking lot, talking to someone else, trying to get his needs met. And so I kept on about my business. And later on, as I was about to go into a store, there were two stores together that I wanted to go shopping in, two stores right side by side. And I sensed that the Holy Spirit said to me, go right, go in the one to the right. My desire was to go in the one to the left because I thought I would find exactly what I was looking for there. And the one in the store to the right, I could take it or leave it. If I had time for it, okay. If I didn't, I could go another day. But I sensed strongly the Holy Spirit was telling me to go in the store to the right. So then I had to surrender my will and say, all right, it's just stores. It doesn't seem like anything important. But, Lord, if this is what you're saying to me, and I said it aloud because I was in the car by myself. I said, Lord, if this is what you're saying to me, I'm going to go in the store to the right. So I parked the car. I went into the store to the right. I looked for what I needed to look for, left the store, didn't think much of it until somebody hollered out to me, ma'am. And so I looked over and I saw the same young man that I had saw, seen talking to somebody across the lot earlier. And so I said, yes, sir. He said, ma'am, can you give me some money? I said, well, I really don't carry money, but are you hungry? He said, yes. I said, okay, I'll go get you something to eat. He said, where are you going to go? So I told him where I was going to go, that I was going to get him something to eat and come back. And so lo and behold, he was waiting for me, and I came back. And I said, okay, Lord, help me with this strategically, because I want to park where I can be seen in plain sight where there are plenty of people around, and I know that it's safe and it's the correct thing to do. And so I stepped out in that spot uh, where it was very visible, so I let him know that I had his meal. But something else the Lord had been speaking to me about lately, too, is to walk around with blessing bags. And years ago, uh, when I lived in Virginia, we would have this practice sometimes of, you know, some of you are familiar with it, and the youth may have done that here, too but just something small to feed your stomach and mainly to feed your spirit in that bag, right? What opens the door, right? And so I handed him the meal that he had requested uh, from the restaurant, but then I also handed him the blessing bag, and he said, what's this? And I said, just some physical food and some spiritual food. He said, oh, okay. And so he began to look at it. And look at it. And I said, well, let me tell you what it says. And I just began to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. And when I'm finding church, a lot of people have heard the gospel in our area. But there's no assurance of salvation a lot of times with the ones that I've been coming across lately. A lack of understanding of what it means to be saved. And so what I'm saying to you is the same thing that our Lord says to us. The fields are ripe unto harvest. Are we willing laborers to go out and to sow seed and to water and to allow God to bring the increase? May it be so in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so we continue to pray as we go. We continue to ask the Lord to lead us and to send us. We continue to keep our vessels clean, our hearts clean from any unforgiveness or bitterness or anything that would cause us to lack a sensitivity to his Holy Spirit because we want to be used for his glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the good news is this, to be on God's dream team, you don't have to need to know how to slam dunk. <laughs> and
and one alley oop or any other thing. You know, you know how to have to need to know how to dribble. Uh, and you certainly don't need a number 23 on the back of your jersey. <laughs> the only thing we need is Jesus Christ. He is our champion. He's our deliverer. He's our redeemer. And by his Holy Spirit, he empowers us to do great things for his glory. He makes all the difference. In fact, Romans 5 and 8 tells us that while we were still sinners, he died for us. It says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us simply because he loves us, all of us. And you know, he loves everyone that we see around us. He loves them. He loves them. May he give us a heart of compassion and sensitivity to love the lost as he does. We know that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Life that lasts forever. Forever. Romans 10 and 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, you shall, you will. And that's the message that I feel uh, that I sense is needed to get out there. People who say, well, I prayed a prayer because somebody told me to. Or I was baptized and I used to go to church or I used to serve on this particular board. I used to help people. And a lack of understanding, church, a lack of understanding of what it means to be saved. And we have the answer for the world today, and that is Jesus Christ. Are we willing to go and share? Jesus comes in to take up residence in us. Our spirit, which was previously dead as a result of sin, is made alive. And we go from being a sinner to being a winner. He empowers us by his Holy Spirit to be able to live righteously in a way that pleases him and to do what he calls us to do for his glory. Acts 4 and 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Do people realize that we have been with Jesus? I hope so. It doesn't matter how much education, how much training we get, we still need the power of Jesus. Without him, we can do nothing. And then that's not to be our excuse on the other side. Well, I'm uneducated. I haven't been to college. I only went to this grade. I didn't do well in school. I don't have any skills. I'm not a people person. I'm shy. It doesn't matter what the excuse. Because it's his power that's being seen through us for his glory in the name of Jesus. And I'll have to tell you, my parents are both here. You can quiz them. You can uh, ask them if this is true later on if you want. But I was one of the shyest children in my class. When I was younger and all throughout elementary school, most of middle school, even into high school, probably until my last two years of high school, uh, when I came out just a little bit. But if a teacher asked me a question, she just knew she had to give me a bad grade if it depended on me answering because I'll write it on my paper. I'll get an A on the test, but I'm not going to speak in front of the class. And I always marvel <laughs> at what God has done. And making me uh, a teacher, open the door for me to be a teacher, uh, and teaching before uh, at least probably 100 students on a daily basis during the school year. So I say, look at God. Look at God. <laughs> it's beautiful to be a part of a team. It's beautiful because not only do we not have to do things in our own effort, which is powerless anyway, 
we get to join together as brothers and sisters in Christ. What a sweet family this is. What a sweet family this is. And many of us are blessed to be fam have some family that's family twice. Family that we were born into who have also been born again. And that's wonderful. But even if you don't yet have that, you are every bit a part of the family of God when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Every bit. And you're never alone. I thank God for being able to come into this house and worship with you all. I thank God for the family of God. So each of the believers, each of us as believers join together doing our part. And the work that he has ordained for us to do, of course, is completed for his glory, his honor, and his praise. And this is why we are often referred to in the scriptures as a body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12 says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one, of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Let me hear you say one body. one body. Yes, one body. So there are many characteristics of the dream team uh, that came out here to me. And one of those is that we're unbeatable, undefeatable, invincible, indisputed champions of the universe. <laughs> How would you like that introduction the next time someone introduces you? <laughs> Christ Jesus, we know, went to the pit, and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And a young man asked me today, he said, if I've committed this sin, will I be forgiven? And I just rejoiced because I was able to tell him what I just told you. And I said, nobody can put you there because Christ holds the keys. Amen. There is no contest. Evil will never have its way over us as long as we stand and resist the enemy. The word of God tells us to resist him and he will flee in the name of Jesus. Now, of course, we know it does not mean that there won't be tough challenges to face. There will be. But we know in the very beginning that we win. We win as long as we don't give up. Amen. Every sports team wants to win over the opposing team. As a matter of fact, some of you in here who are big fans of a particular team always want your team to win, of course. I wasn't so big into sports growing up. My dad, uh, I don't know if he'll want me to say this, but um, the former Washington Redskins was the only team that we were really allowed to watch during football season in our house. So, you know, I was, a, I guess, a, a automatic, yeah, <laughs> an automatic fan. Uh, but when my children began to be on sports teams and to play soccer, and um, basketball, and I think we did one season of uh, tackle football. You want to see a fanatic, okay? <laughs> you know how it is if you have nieces or nephews or children or grandchildren out there. You want your team to win. You want your baby to win. <laughs> and so that's how it is with us, but that's all how also the Lord is over us. He's watching over us, and he wants us to win. He wants us to win. He's made every provision for us to win. So let's stop being afraid to go to him or ashamed to go to him. No, he wants us to win. Let's stay close to him. Let's call on him. Let's depend on him. Let's lean on him every day in the name of Jesus. And, of course, the bigger the score, the better. You hear f fans using words like, let's destroy them. Let's annihilate them. 
and talking about the, the opposing team. Okay? So you better believe that as God's people, we also have an opponent. Okay? The great news is that he's not a worthy adversary. He's no match for our God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our champion, Jesus Christ. He's a defeated foe, and we have got to remember that whenever we face those trials and those difficulties, he's been defeated in the name of Jesus. We win. We win. We win. <laughs> 1 John 3, 8 says, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy. Let me hear you say destroy. Destroy the works of the devil. And may it be so in your life and in mine. We always look forward to the victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 50, says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall, let me read that again. And we shall, let me read that again. And we shall <laughs> be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory in the name of Jesus. Amen to the living God. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. To so talk about a winning combination, a winning strategy, we are to be steadfast. We're not to run scared every time the enemy rages his ugly head. We are not to stop doing what God has called us to do just because we're going through a rough season. We are not to doubt that the Lord is going to do all that he promised us he would do. Amen. We live for his glory. Now, sometimes we hear coaches and we hear athletes saying, just, just do the work. Just do the work. When you don't feel like getting up and going to the gym, you don't feel like pumping iron, you don't feel like running, whatever it is you have to do to get fit for a particular sport, they said, just, just do the work. That made me think of work the word because the word works. Work the word because the word works. That's what we do as Christians. That's our word. I mean, that's our work. We've got to work the word of God. How do we work the word? I was so excited on Sunday, Pastor, uh, when the Lord ministered uh, through you regarding meditating on the word of God and how important that is. Whatever the enemy, whatever has entered my mind concerning something that's contrary or opposite what the word of God says, guess what? I take that thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. No, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Whatever it is, no, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, take that word and work the word over your life. 
and over the life of your family members in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Colossians 2, 6 and 10 says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. How often do we meditate on that? God chose that his fullness, his fullness is in Christ. We know that Christ is the image of the unseen God. So that means if Christ is in me, how is it that I lack any power at all? I don't. The fullness of the Godhead is he was raised back to life because that's so important for us to remember. He not only died, he was buried and raised back to life and life forevermore. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive forever. And so he rose up into heaven and he has promised to receive us one day. You know, whether we go by way of the grave or whether we go as being caught up to meet him in the air, either way, those who are in Christ will be raised to eternal life in heaven, rather eternal torment in hell. If you haven't responded to this call, I urge you to respond. And for those of you who are in the house, if you need prayer, Pastor, if I may say, once Pastor closes things out as the Lord leads him, please don't leave here tonight if there's something that you need prayer for. Again, we're all on the same team. We're on God's dream team. If we are children of the Most High God, we are here for each other. So don't leave here tonight if you have a need and you need prayer. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. From sinner to winner. Thank you, Melinda. Wonderful job. Such compassion, such obedience. Um, you know, I, I think about the dream team and that none of us have been called to be bench warmers. Amen. Um, and it's not just the pastors who, uh, have a word for people. We all can have a word for somebody. Amen. It's not just the preachers that can be given the gift of prophecy. Uh, God speaks to his people. And you don't have to be behind a pulpit in order for God to speak to you. Amen? Or for God to use you. And so uh, I thank you again so much for that wonderful message and for letting the Lord lead you. And that young man that you witnessed to, we're going to believe uh, for his uh, salvation in Christ Jesus and real families. And this traumatized those kids. They were watching their papa. Uh, who's 78 years old, have to get down on the ground, and then he's bleeding from his, his head. But um, something that has really, really, and I wanted to, I, I, I'm going to learn more about J.D. Vance. I'm going to watch the movie about him. Um, but I really was hoping Tim Scott would be the, the vice president from, from South Carolina. But when Tim Scott spoke the other night, he declared the name of Jesus Christ on live television, not just any God, but live television, the name above all names, the Alpha and the Omega. And I have watched as so many preachers, constant prayer, constant prayer taking place. And there's something different going on here. And I think that tomorrow night we may see a very different man uh, behind that microphone, a man who has been humbled and the pride that he has had and, ex and the tough guy that he's been. And you got to be tough to do what he's doing. But I think we're going to see a very different Donald Trump. 
And um, I believe that God consecrated him the other night uh, because when Moses uh, prayed over Aaron and his sons, he touched them with the second ram, it's blood, second term. He anointed them on their right ear, their right thumb, their right foot. And I've been talking with, I, I, I didn't think of that. A, a preacher called me about that. But what if God is raising him up for such a time as this, and we're going to see a redeemed man, not a cocky man, not an arrogant man, not a boastful man, but a man after God's own heart because a near-death experience will get you closer to Jesus. Amen? What if? What if this could take place? And so um, uh, just be, be in prayer for that. Be in prayer for Joe Biden, too, that there could be a sinister plot uh, aimed at him if he doesn't get out of the way the way that his own people are wanting him to get out of the way. But at the same time, I want to see our nation get back on its feet. Um, I'm tired of going to Bojangles, and it cost him $40 for lunch. Bojangles. Bojangles is good now. Don't get me wrong, Brother Jerry. I don't mean any offense. Amen. But come on now. $40 at Bojangles for lunch. Amen. We need some help. We need relief in this country. We need inflation to go down. We need to drill, baby, drill. Amen. I am not a climate uh, environmentalist. That is a, if you are a climate environmentalist, here's what I say. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. He's not going to let it flood. Amen. He decides when he ends everything. He's going to make all things new. You don't have to worry about no glaciers melting. You don't have to worry about no ozone layer. Amen. He, this all belongs to him. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to drill. We need to quit making all these other countries rich. Hallelujah. And we need to protect our country. Amen. And so let's just pray that we see a different uh, man and that we see a man after God's own heart. And the Kim Clement prophecy that his second term, he'll be filled. Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's be remembering Wendy Davis. She's asking for prayers. Her mother and father both have covid we rebuke that in Jesus' name. I haven't heard that in a while. Amen. And they are on up in age, if I'm not mistaken, like near uh, in their 80s. So, Lord God, let's really. In fact, I, with someone, I, I would have Brother Jerry and Sister Lily in a moment come and be anointed on their behalf. I just feel that uh, quickening in my spirit. Irma Pridgen, um, and this hits close to home. Remember Leaston Parker? He his family, he passed away yesterday. Um, he was very precious to my daddy. My dad, This is my daddy's first cousin, and he, he passed away yesterday. He was a great mechanic. Daddy said he could tune engines with his ear just by listening to him. Amen? Like a guitar. Like T Tremaine can tune a guitar with his ear. He doesn't even need a tuner. And Leaston Parker could tune an engine that way. Amen? Uh, Pam Green is asking for prayers. God knows the need. Let's continue to remember uh, Brother Jerry Leonard, who uh, just buried his brother uh, just uh, last week, and, and um, also Karen Ezel, who is back from Denmark. Excuse me, Den Norway. I get Norway. The Vikings are from all over there. Uh, Norway, and as soon as she got back, she took that trip went ahead and took the trip because she knew she had so shoulder surgery uh, this past Friday, and she's already back in church, so we're thanking God uh, for her being here tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let's continue to remember Steve McHenry. This is Stacy McHenry Williamson, Brother Woody's wife. This is uh, her father. Uh, the procedure they tried to do on his lungs failed. Um, and so he's ha they're telling him he's got to live uh, with just partial, very, very minimal lung function. But we believe that the great physician can, can succeed where man's failed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, um, I pray over all these needs tonight. Let's stretch our hands in faith. And God, we just lift up Brother Jerry and his family. We lift up Stacy and her family. We lift up. Uh, the family of Leaston Parker, God. Hallelujah. 
is all these folks in our family that I grew up knowing and seeing, Lord, they're all going home to be with the Lord. And so, God, I just ask that you just touch his family. And, and God, for Sister Pam Green, you know the need tonight for her. And, God, we're just so thankful for Sister Melinda and her obedience unto you. And we lift up this young man that she witnessed to, God. And, and God, we're just believing for a mighty harvest, for that man to give his uh, life to you. And, and God, we lift, up, we lift up the Trump grandchildren tonight. And, Lord God, that they be able to put that, that image uh, behind them and know that their grandfather's all right, Lord God, and that no weapon formed against him shall prosper, God. And we pray for our nation, Lord God, that no matter how the election turns out, we rebuke violence, we rebuke intimidation. Lord God, let us be under one accord, Lord Jesus, and let your truth set people free. Let your truth set the LGBTQ community free. Let your truth, Lord God, hallelujah, Oh, well, thank you, Lord God, that a friend of Israel, hallelujah, is on the verge of coming back, and they can be set free from the intimidating attacks of Hamas, Lord God. Protect your holy nation, Lord Jesus. We just praise you. We love you, Lord God. We lift up our assistant pastor tonight, Lord God. Just continue to bless him, God, and sustain his body until his breakthrough procedure happens, God, and just help him, Lord God, as he's working these long hours, Lord Jesus. Lord God, give him supernatural energy, Jesus. And we just praise you right now. God, I just thank you for these new songs you're giving our church, Lord God. I thank you for this book, Lord Jesus, that has come to print. May every person that reads it be set free from victimology, Lord God, from a victim mindset. Help me as I preach twice this Sunday, Lord God. Help my voice to hold up in both services, Lord God, and we look forward to a Holy Ghost move of you, Lord Jesus. God, we praise you and we thank you and we honor you. Let every person be safe out on the road tonight as they return home in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. I want my pastor and my first lady to come tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, everybody. Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall. Thanking you for joining us, and we hope you're having a great summer. And we would love for you to join us in person if you're in driving distance every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Our cafe opens at 8.45 a.m. with hot coffee and all kinds of refreshments and treats. And then at 10 o'clock, you're going to hear Freedom Worship. And we're going to have great series preaching for you. King's Kids will be in session for the elementary students. And then on Wednesday night, we have our, our weekly midweek Bible study this summer with all the youth groups for the Fusion students in middle and high school as well as King's Kids and Junior King's Kids. And that's every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And at 5.45 p.m., our cafe opens uh, as well during the week. So come on right now. We've got all the other ministries shut down for the summer because people are traveling. People are having vacation time. But we're still here having church for our worship celebration every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and our midweek Bible study uh, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So we hope you're having a great summer. And if you're in town and not on vacation, come join us here at CFC where we are all about Him and lives truly change here. What do you say about that, Pastor Tim? We're going to have a Holy Ghost good time. Yeah. So come and see us. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in.